let us look at L1 and L infinity norm minimization. We have already seen the least squares problem where the goal was to minimize the L2 norm square of the AX minus B. So the problem can be generalized and we can look for example at the L1 norm minimization which as you can expect would be written as min over x L1 norm of AX minus B. Note here that x is in Rn and A is in R m cross n. So this is a m cross 1 dimensional vector whose L1 norm we are taking. So this can be written as min over x summation over i equal to 1 to m absolute value of ai transpose x minus bi. Right. So this is the absolute value of ai transpose x minus bi. So this is actually a linear programming problem. So we can write this as an LP by the application of the epigraph trick. So the use of epigraph trick here yields minimization over i equal to 1 to m ri where ai transpose x minus bi absolute value is less than equal to ri now this is a minimization over x comma r right where r is in rm and x was in rn so now this is a problem whose uh, optimization variables are from the dimension m plus n and we already know that this constraint can be written as a transpose x minus bi less than equal to ri and greater than equal to minus ri. So there we have some linear constraints and linear objective function which is therefore a linear programming problem. Sometimes this problem is compactly written as x comma r minimization of 1 transpose r subject to ax minus b less than equal to r and greater than equal to minus r. So this is the compact representation. So these two problems are exactly the same. Uh, this notation here means that this is entry wise less than equal to. Now what is the difference or what difference does it make if we minimize the L1 norm versus when we were minimizing the L2 norm. So if we want to express the L1 and L2 norm problems uh, simultaneously, let's see how the L2 norm minimization problem looks like. So if we apply the epigraph trick on the least squares problem, suppose we have ax minus b norm square and we apply the epigraph trick, you can see that we will obtain minimization of summation of ri square i equal to 1 to m where minus ri is less than equal to ai transpose x minus bi less than equal to ri right so just to compare uh, with uh, l1 norm minimization problem we have the same constraint but the objective functions are different the objective function here is summation of ri and here it is square of summation of square of ri so what does it mean for us to minimize L1 norm versus L2 norm? So these Ri's can be seen as residues. You can think of the residuals as bounds on the error. So in the L1 norm minimization problem, we are minimizing the absolute value of the residuals so think of it as this is our penalty function this is the residuals and this is the loss function so we are minimizing this quantity and if we obtain we have different residual values for different points i equal to 1 to m then we are minimizing we are putting a higher penalty for those residuals which are larger on the other hand 
in the L2 norm minimization problem, we have a quadratic loss. So we are putting a lower penalty on those residuals which are smaller, but a significantly higher penalty on those residuals which are larger. So this is the L1 norm and this is the L2 norm minimization problem. So in the L2 norm minimization problem, we are paying more attention to the residuals which are much larger and we are paying less attention to the residuals which are smaller. On the other hand, in the L1 norm minimization problem, we are sort of paying equal attention to all or proportional attention to all. So L1 norm puts a lower penalty on larger residuals while L2 norm puts a higher square penalty on larger residuals. So what does it imply? When you have a lower penalty on larger residuals, it would mean that you actually allow or you are sort of okay with having large residuals. On the other hand, with L2 norm, you are not okay with having large residuals and you absolutely want to minimize very large residuals. The effect of this is that if there are some points which have very large error, when you do an L1 norm minimization, the fit will be such that the large error will be tolerated and it will be sort of ignored, but it will not be ignored in the L2 norm case. And, and a more extreme version of L2 norm is the L infinity norm minimization. So the L infinity norm minimization problem is given by min over x infinity norm of ax minus b which can be written as min over x max over i. So this is the definition of infinity norm and by use of the epigraph trick this is equivalent to min over x comma r. Now in this case r is a scalar and max over i ai transpose x minus bi is less than equal to r and we have already seen that whenever the maximum of certain quantities is less than equal to r it implies that so this constraint can be written as ai transpose x minus bi less than equal to r for all i from 1 to m or if you write, want to write it as a lp you can write it as a transpose x minus b i less than equal to r and greater than equal to minus r. So as compared to L1 or L infinity norm, here we are not paying attention to individual residuals, but the largest residual among all of the points. So there are m points among those, the largest residual that we get, we are minimizing that quantity. So these were the three examples of norms which we can use for the approximation problem. To get a better idea of what it means to minimize the different norms of the residuals, let us take a simple line fitting example. The same idea is of course applicable to more complicated examples. So let's say that we are in R2. Because it is easier to visualize that way. And let's say that the residuals are given by, so let's denote this vector r as ax minus b. So as earlier, r is m dimensional and x is two dimensional here. Because x is two dimensional, a is in r m cross two. So note that a is a column, a has two columns and m rows. So actually here in a line fitting, uh, you have M points and you are trying to fit a line in a two dimensional space. So think of it as something like this. So these are the M points. So this is for example, one, two, three, four. You can number the points as M points. And we are trying to fit a line which is in two dimensional the parameters of the line namely the slope 
and the abscess so if you remember the line in two dimensional would have two parameters so all these are contained in the vector x which is in r2 and each of these points are described by two coordinates so those are contained in a and b so without loss of generality we generally take a as containing all ones in the first column because generally you can always scale the line and it would still remain the line so therefore the first column is taken to be all ones and the second column would be some a2 to am and then there would be parameter b1 to bm right so together ax minus b would be the residues so ax minus b for a given line would correspond to these quantities so if there is a point here this would be the ai transpose x minus bi for that ith point right so this is the line fitting example and uh, now let us try to see what is the impact of minimizing different norms when trying to fit a line so we are given m points so let me just write it down we are given m points in other words we are given a and b and our goal is to find x is in r2 by minimizing this problem ax minus b pth norm with respect to x and we are interested in comparing the cases for p 1 2 and infinity we can of course take any p greater than or equal to 1 but these three are the most interesting ones as we have already discussed different norms correspond to different penalties applied to various residuals so the question we are asking now is that what does it mean to minimize a particular norm of a residue and as we have discussed so far in the l1 norm case we would be minimizing some of the absolute values of ri remember that r is defined like this in the l2 norm case we are minimizing some of ri square and in the L infinity norm case we are minimizing the maximum of ri maximum of absolute value of ri so what is the difference between minimizing these three where ri is defined as ax minus b so this is another formulation of the same problem uh, note that here r is different from the r that we were using earlier so let's uh, take a numerical example in order to demonstrate this better so here is an example of a few observations note here that there are two points which are off the line so you could say that these are two points or two observations which have large error such points are also called outliers as we have already seen using the l2 norm penalizes the larger residuals by their square while using the l1 norm penalizes all the residuals by their absolute value so let us look at the lines obtained by using l1 and l2 norms since the l2 norm is penalizing the square residuals the contribution of the two observations with large error is very high so after minimization of the square of the residuals we end up with the blue line so you can see the blue line does not pass through all the points because it is tilted so that the residuals from the points which have larger error is small to the extent possible in contrast in l1 norm case the two points do not contribute as much to the overall penalty and hence the red line passes through all the remaining points but is farther away from the two outliers in other words the effect of using l1 norm is that the final fit is good for all the points except for the outliers on the other hand the outliers affect the l2 norm fit to a larger extent the same argument obviously extends to the l infinity norm fit where we penalize the largest residual so the l infinity norm fit is shown by the black line and you can see that it is tilted even further in order to take into account the two outliers because it is affected by the outliers to a larger extent and it is focusing entirely on the largest residual or the observation which has the largest residue so in summary 
the focus of the optimization problem changes as we use different norms. In general, we should make the choice of the norm depending on our goal.